What's up, everyone? What's up? Welcome to Planet Xbox Podcast. What will Planet Xbox Podcast? I am your host, the best bot, Kiss Move, and I have ILP, Lord Gaming Addict here, as always. What's up? What's going on, man? Uh, I'm sure we got a uh, uh, interesting conversation since we both, you know, got our hands on what, what four hours of uh, Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws, man. This is Star Wars Outlaws edition. Um, we're definitely going to talk a uh, bulk of the conversation about that. Uh, I think by the time everybody is watching this, you know, well, our, our our what I think we should be do because we've never done nothing like this. Yeah, is keep that for the end of the show. Like mm-hmm. talk all the Xbox stuff and let them watch that if they want but you know because we're probably about half and half half xbox and half on this topic <clears throat> mm-hmm. yeah uh, which one you had to start first with that no outlaws let's just do the, the xbox stuff okay, first yeah. and, the, and the outlaw stuff in the back end because gotcha. the uh, you can argue that there's a lot of people that come in here that have don't care about star wars outlaws they come here for for us to talk about that yeah, but I'm definitely eager to talk about it. But as far as the Xbox things, uh, uh, what have you uh, been playing in general? Uh, I I finished the, the base story for Fable, okay. the original one. So I have like this new thing. Um, I'm going to play random games this week. And then next week, I'm going to play Fable 2. Okay. Uh, beat Fable Two next week, and then uh, the week after that's going to be like a random week, and vice versa. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like in between each game, you're going to dedicate a week to just randomness before you dedicate yeah, a week. Like today, to, I yeah. was going to play that Path of the Goddess game. Yeah. But I ended up streaming uh, Zelda for an hour. Zelda for, for two and a half hours. Yeah. Which Zelda? Um, Ocarina of Time. Okay. Um, I've I uh, completed my 100% completion of Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. Um, I dropped that game. I, I said you would drop the game. <laughs> yeah. It's not that I like dropped it from anything bad yeah. with the game. It's just I got so much stuff. I'm like, when you stream and you're, you're trying to like really grow a streaming platform, you really, you realize that it's like, if you're not filling the game to it, because I would still probably play it, but mm. it, it like, Unless it's really grabbing my attention, like that is like one of those things where it's like, okay, I'll get to it when I get to it. It's not like a priority. Yeah. Um, and now I had like by the time, I think at the time of the the review or release, I think I had maybe, you know, seventy eight or eighty percent of the um, achievements, and um, and it was just kind of like back to like really like work. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna dedicate. Uh, was it when did I do it all? Was it yesterday or two days ago? I think two days ago. It was a day that I had off. I think Saturday. I was like, you know, I'm gonna just go and try to just f- finish off these a- achievements. It felt really satisfied doing it and, and uninstall uh, uninstall the game because once I hundred percent the game, I can safely uninstall. Uh, I made the mistake of doing that with Dead Island uh, too, and they had two more expansions. So I had to download the thing twice so I can play through the. Um, their uh dlc content to get those but i did that and i kind of haven't really rededicated myself to another game um i do want to pick back up i think my camera is gonna like die uh soon this camera uh this i have a logitech brio um i feel like it's going because it's like blinking in and out but um i i do want to uh try to i do want to wrap up resident evil 4 because i think i'm i'm I believe I'm like sixty percent, sixty or seventy percent through before I end up uh, like stop. I stopped playing it at some point. I think I stopped playing it, you know, I think prior to like Hellblade Two coming. Um, I think that's when I end up playing it was during the uh, Hellblade Two. But and obviously been playing a little bit of uh, college football. Um, Did you ever end up buying that game? No. Oh, you're still on the trial? Yep, still on the trial. Milk in the trial. Um <laughs> but yeah, no, um I I don't think I'll I, I would buy, I'm gonna buy it. I'm not nowhere as good as I need to be in that game to could to dedicate like eighty dollars to it, seventy, eighty dollars to it. Um I think things are just expensive in general. And, and and on top of just things being expensive, 
gaming is very expensive and it's like i almost have to exclusively rely on game share game pass <laughs> and hopefully i get connected with like a you know uh review codes and stuff like that but uh I mean, that's pretty much it for what I played. I've I've done the... I posted a video today. Hold on, let me grab it. Um, yeah, it took me a while to get um, this uh, video out. This is the Spark N5 controller. It's um, not going to talk too much about it, only because this is a PlayStation-associated controller. Uh, but it looks like an Xbox controller. So it's... Uh, Decent for the PC, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, definitely decent for the PC and for cloud gaming. So, had fun with that. Um, anything, any news I missed? I saw Cloberal said that Playground Games have like a third studio. Did you hear about this? Yeah, the way it seems like right now is they do have a third studio, but <clears throat> it doesn't seem like it's like a studio that's designed for anything like extravagant. It seems like it's a support studio right now. Okay, Cause, that's probably not forever, but you know what yeah. I'm saying. Because if we know this, the, they had the the <clears> one <throat> studio that does Force Horizon, and then I think Saint Albans House does Fable. I wish they rename it to Lionhead Studio. Why? Because I felt like that. Peter that Molyneux. Uh, Peter Mo Molyneux owns. Uh, I think owns the name to the Lionheads, right? Then just buy buy that shit from you. Probably buy it for a fucking price of the game at this point. What's he going to do with it? Yeah. Um. What's what, what's the name of the place that Fable takes place in? Albion. Albion. Yeah. Uh, they they could call it Albion Studios, like. <laughs> but then, Albion Entertainment. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. But that means that that means it, for you to change your name to something based on the game, you kind of be, have to be committed. Like how 343 is just committed to Halo and, and Coalition is committed to Gears. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you could, like, I'm trying to think of any, if there's another studio that's that has this name based off something they just make. Hmm. Or, or is Xbox really the only ones that... Uh, there's probably some out there, but they've shut yeah. down. Yeah, probably. Um, what else? Uh, have uh, I know the Xbox 360 store has sunset uh, today at the time is recording. So uh, the Xbox 360, when you power that bad boy on, you will no longer be able to buy anything from that store. That store is done finito. Uh, so I know the every time these things come up to talk to talk about preservation, um, I you know the 360 is what 2024 2024 it's it's 19 years old. It, if it if they kept the store open until like November of next year, it would have been 20 years, mm -hmm. which is kind of unheard of. Um, but you know, it was a good long run. Uh, I just wish they made, you know, I wish it was 100% backwards compatibility. Had there been, I would have been taking advantage of a lot of those sales. But a lot of those game sales were for games that weren't backwards compatible. So it makes sense for me to go and buy because I'm not going to buy a 360 to, you know, the, the, to play these games or to revisit them. I guess if I went to, like, you know, do some throwback achievement hunting. But it, it, sometimes it's hard to go back to, like, what is that, Gen 8? Is that yeah, I think Gen Seven, I think Gen Seven uh, games. Um, they're not as retro as like going back to NES and SNES. They have a different type of retro to it. I feel like Gen Seven is just old, you know, uh, like outdated because it's it's like the games now haven't I guess evolved much from that. They just look better. They perform better. They're more crispier. The games like kind of have the same dynamics then now they're just ashier, uh, more noisier, and they all have that gray effect. So it's just they're just not really like really fun to play. But um, you know, shout out to the Xbox 360. Uh, still, Xbox is you know you know best console, the best, uh, the most competitive console they've made. I had a lot of fun on that uh, platform. Um. 
there's reports of uh, an update rolling out that I guess the Xbox One is unable to access because it's just it's too old. So it's making the console like I guess is I don't want to say it, I don't want to say it's bricking the console, but it's is making games unplayable on it because it can't get the update. Now, with that being the case, being at the the VCR Xbox One. <clears throat> It's still part of last generation. It, it exists. A lot of people still have it. Microsoft <laughs> need to fix that. I feel like the way Microsoft treats consoles, right, and how they go about their consoles, I feel like the console should be either dirt cheap or free. Like, there should be, like, free programs to, like, hey, you know, bring your Xbox One in Hello? and get how a series are? replacement. Give me some time. You know, you're not on mute, by what? the way. Tums, I gotta go. Bye bye. Um, sorry, I was telling my brother to to get me something from Walmart. That's okay. <clears throat> um, right, so, I, so I was saying, I think the way the way that Microsoft and how they handle like their consoles, they really should be set up to like to replace to for someone to trade in like trade in your Xbox One and get like a Series S or whatever for free or something like that. That's what it really should be like, or it make these consoles dirt cheap because the thing is, is that like they, I guess they're rolling out updates that the Xbox One, the OG VCR Xbox One, can't accept, which essentially kills the console. Well, at this point, they should even care because they don't seem like they care about anything related to the console. So <laughs> we can't do this again, even though you got a lot of support in the last video, uh, the last podcast. From last week. Oh, oh I did. Yeah. Oh, I don't be checking the comments like that. <clears throat> um. Let's see. Um. Other than that, though, I don't. I I know we Call of Duty finally made its way. Uh, to Game Pass, Modern Warfare Three, and Valorant. I'm not sure if we talked about these. Last week, because I think they happened after the podcast. Yeah, they happened, I think, almost immediately after the podcast last week. Um, Again, I'm happy that Call of Duty's, you know, went in there, but this is not the Call of Duty I was looking forward to. Um, I'm I'm looking for, I want want to play Vanguard. I want to play, um, I think I have, I think I own Black Ops Cold War. Uh, I enjoyed that one very much. Um, World War Two, I think Infinite Warfare. Some of the there's there's a series of games that came out. I think from 2015 to about 2018 or 2019. I didn't I didn't buy. I stopped playing. And then some obviously the 360 ones. Uh, I think I I I stopped playing Call of Duty from like I think after the second Modern Warfare. I dropped it. And just let because I I wasn't good I couldn't get good I couldn't keep up and then I didn't pick back up until Call of Duty Ghosts which I think I own Call of Duty Ghosts um, but I want to see some of those games uh, some of the older games go into Game Pass for sure Vanguard definitely I think that was a uh, oh, oh I never played it so that's why I definitely play it and I want uh, some of their other IPs to go in there um, like the Crashes still don't know why it's not in Game Pass considering what's in PS Plus uh, Tony Hawk Spiral. Uh, all that good stuff and then like you know the prototypes of course um want to see if they uh, entertain any more backwards compatibility any more fps boost uh sort of things but uh those are i guess the stuff we're going to be asking for until they do it but right now uh diablo 4 and modern warfare 3 are the only entries to xbox game pass since xbox closed the deal on activision blizzard last october so Thoughts? I don't know, man. Like, I guess when it comes to everything going on right now, <clears throat> as you can see, the last video, uh, the last podcast we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I mean, when it comes to, to like something as simple as the the shutting down the Xbox 360 stores. Mm-hmm. That doesn't really bother me as much. Uh, does it bother you? No, not necessarily. Um, not necessarily. I, I think can't. that's pretty standard. I, I think mm. it, it'd be in, disingenuous to say that that doesn't 
happen a lot. I think we can all agree that that uh that happens quite a bit. But I don't know, man. It's just I think that uh a lot of stuff's going good though. I will admit on that. It's just it's hard to like be extremely positive about anything Xbox related mm. when like they just be doing so much shit I don't agree with. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I know we, we talked about it in depth, uh, last week. Um, I'm not sure, uh, if there was any news that came out, um, this week. Um, no, it's been pretty, pretty decent, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. it looks like the, you know, the, you know, the three, the, the series S is still and the series X still performing well. I'm curious to see. Um, what does that mean for the MPD in the month of, uh, I think July? Um, I think we'll find that out. I think towards the end of like, I think August or whatever. I'm curious to see how it, uh, you know, it impacted. Um, we got Gamescom next month. Um, we'll see what we'll do there. Hopefully we get updates on Avowed and Indiana Jones. Uh, Stark, Stalker 2 was delayed a whopping two and a half months uh, to November 20th, um, leaving September wide open for any game that Xbox wants to drop other than those RTSs that they got. They got a, they got a buttload of RTSs they want to drop in September. Um, but November, um, like, I, to be honest, dude, I lost all interest of uh, in, um, in Stalker 2. Like I, I, I get it. Like as far as like development, you know, the in Ukraine, the war, and all that stuff. But uh, the game got delayed so many times. It's just that I'm no. That was supposed to be like a, I think a launch title or or a launch year uh, title for the Series X, and I'm, I'm just no. I'm just no longer interested in it. Uh, I'll be happy to see it come out, but. I don't think it was a you know a huge um, release to like prevent any other game from coming out in the path, um, but it leaves September open. Sorry, we still don't have a date for um, Shattered Space Starfield expansion. Um, that I mean, Soccer Two was originally September six, uh, and I think that no, sorry to interrupt you, but I think that's like my biggest issue. Mm-hmm. It's where I like I understand that publishers and developers are are starting to hold on to these dates more and more, but at the same time, it's like, <clears throat> how am I supposed to plan my life around any of these games? Are you going to tell me like a month before they come out? Like, it, at this point, we're about to hit. Um, I do think we're going to get. Um, we're going to get what's it called? Um, uh, Indiana Jones. I think that's coming for sure. But it's like, damn, man, I got to wait all this time for this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I don't know, man. It's just that you would think, you know, considering like timing, you want time to like, I guess people don't care about pre-orders no more. I think that's, uh, you know, pre- pre-orders. Uh, release were date release dates were good for pre-orders and whatnot, but I guess since I think that's less effective, um, I I don't know. I mean, the today's marketing of video games, I think, or uh, the 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 campaign of releasing the the roadmap of releasing video games in this generation, I think, is completely trash, completely trash. But um, hopefully. You know, we get what we want. Hopefully, Starfield expansion releases in September. Hopefully, you know, they could push um, Indiana Jones to, like, October or something, whatever. And, you know, Vod can come out, uh, hopefully, in the rumored November 12th date that they originally had before they pulled it. Um, we will, we will I, see. I think Indiana Jones will probably definitely be hearing something. Uh, probably at Gamescom. At Gamescom, but... yeah. 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 But uh, no, nah, that's because uh, you got to think about it. One delay from Xbox literally like thrashes the air. You know, <laughs> I, like so. Out of all those games, what would you be the less disappointed with if it got delayed from Microsoft? Yeah. 
Okay, because I was about to say stalker, delay that. I don't care. But um, I mean, from like either a Val or Indiana. Jones, from Indiana, because... if any of them got delayed, I think I would be more. I would be more uh, disappointed in Avowed getting delayed. Um, I don't. The thing is, I want to play Avowed. Like the thing is, I think Indiana Jones is going to be fine. You know, mm-hmm. Indiana Jones looks good, but it, personally, I would have rather Indiana Jones be like a third person action adventure. Uh, Tomb Raider, uh, Uncharted clone, right? I, I think I would have been super amped for that way because I'm, because it can be done, obviously. But you know, I'm still curious about Indiana Jones. I'm very curious about it. I want to play it. I, it's, 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 I'm looking forward to it. But avowed from the time that it was revealed to it getting his first gameplay reveal to getting his update. I've been. I know what I've knew what to expect from Avowed for every for ever since his re- reveal, and that's kind of when I'm in the mood to play. I'm in the mood to play Avowed and a game like Avowed because it, the way I'm thinking about it is a uh, a an outer worlds version of like a Skyrim, Elder right? Scrolls. Yeah, the Elder Scrolls game, and I loved Outer Worlds. I like that that just that my appetite is like great for like an outer worlds and my appetite would be great for a vibe because something tells me and i'm looking forward to the next assassin's creed just something tells me i'm not going to like it or enjoy it as much as i did like a uh origins or odyssey you know i liked valhalla but not as much as i did odyssey and, and origins and i didn't like mirage at all, and I know you no know, shadows aren't isn't going to be anything like Mirage or anything like that because Mirage was supposed to be a call to like the originals, but didn't quite nail it. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to like it, right? Um, and I think Avowed will be my re- would be my relief for a game like like I need like you know some open, I just need some just need to have some fun in the wilderness with some you know combat and some magic some good storytelling and something that's not going to be a thousand hours. Right. Um, but I, I would be really disappointed if a was, um, delayed. Um, and I think it takes a, a, a punch. It takes the air out of what we thought we were getting from Xbox this year. Cause I feel like, all right, you gave us Hellblade, but this was supposed to be Xbox biggest year. PlayStation had absolutely no games and they end up having a bunch of games at, at when you consider it. But, um, like from a first party standpoint, they have like no games and you have all the games. I feel like Xbox and Ubisoft will be be the ones dropping the best games this year. And 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 then if you know they can't manage to get Avowed out or Indiana Jones or whatever out, I mean that's gonna be extremely disappointing because it's like I don't wanna wait till twenty twenty five. Uh, where they're gonna have the oh, this time's gonna be the best year because maybe the best games, the best games I'm looking forward to next year gets end up getting delayed. You know what I mean? Like, it's I don't know, man. Game is starting to suck. <laughs> yeah, I agree. There's a lot of aspects to uh, <clears throat> to gaming right now that's very underwhelming and yeah. it doesn't feel like it's gonna improve. Yeah, that's a <clears throat> it's an unfortunate. You know, feeling, uh, for sure, for sure. So, um, any updates on your end with the uh, the Xbox landscape? Not really. Um, being told Gamescom is going to be interesting for Xbox. Don't really know what they mean by that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, we're we're coming up on Gamescom. Yeah, which is good because the topics for the gaming industry has been god awful here lately. So, at least now we'll finally have something to talk about. Yeah, that that that's yeah. The news got to pick up, you know, in Gamescom maybe, and maybe you know everyone's viewership would increase or go back up. Um, I think viewership is down across the board. <laughs> good bless you. Yeah, sorry. Um. Let's talk about uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Um, okay. We were giving... Well, we've had two different times. I mean, I, 
Um, I was given the opportunity to play uh, four hours of it. I didn't get the full four hours because I was late, so I got at least three full hours. Um, I want to say, uh, want to say last week you got to play what two weeks ago? Yeah, I played um a good a good amount of it. I played I played the four. I played like three hours and thirty minutes, but I finished the whole demo. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> and um, what are what are your thoughts on uh, what you've played? I guess not your thoughts, but like if you if we could just talk about, you know, what we played, what we saw, and uh, in the in the I guess the the, the demo or the versions we played. I think we played two portions, two different parts of the game. Like one was was fairly early into the game, while one was probably a little bit further down uh, the line in the game. Yeah, which is interesting how they did that. How much did you play of that over the that portion that's like further on in the game? I finished that portion. Um, yeah, that, I, that was interesting. Yeah. Um, the first portion is like, I guess I could, if considering how much time I had after I finished the second part, I was like, I could have gone back and, and, and finished the uh, first portion, but I feel like I played enough. Of the I did a, I did a couple of missions and then I I think they let me do a, a side quest or so, uh, but um, the personally what I think Outlaws is going to be right I think is going to be very I think it's going to be fun I think it's going to be interesting I think uh, so far what I played I feel like Outlaws is the less Ubisoft like game I've played from ubisoft it's it doesn't seem like in ubisoft games like just the design of the game uh there's a lot going on with the game and maybe it's just the the star wars universe but anywhere from like the missions uh and the 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 verbal cues that you get and the way how uh they go about missions and the these multifaceted ways that you're given uh to tackle missions everything is there's an option there's there's multiple ways to skin a cat in this game every time any mission you're from uh mi- mission so far that i played i've had multiple ways to do so um some were more challenging some were uh more easier or some were just like you know what just go out guns blazing. I like the way the game feels. Um, and I feel like the, the, the fun factor in a game is it, it's high. They're like they get, they get, they got us into the game. I didn't, don't think it was really slow at all. Um, uh, there was a couple things that I need to get used to. Um, I know you get the, um, companion, the little Fox looking thing. The, the, I think the thing is name is Nix. You play as yeah. that pretty much acts as like a third arm of the game. I like the utilizing Nyx. It made it add like an element to the game, uh, especially because they have you. They have they'll have you stealth a lot, and you can have Nyx do certain things like um, you know go and distract uh, the AI that's guarding a space or go, you can even have Nyx go and take a, like a weapon or a grenade off one of the guards or something. And they bring it to you. Um, I was, oh, yeah. I had it uh, once you did the skip, did you say where you can make Nixus uh, like explode? Yes. Uh, like their grenades. Yes. Yes. Uh, there was a portion of the chick. I was because the way they have it set up is you have like a, uh, someone that helps you with the game, like in case you get stuck. Yeah. And she, uh, at that point in the game, like they, uh, they picked up the game dramatically and like a lot more sh- stuff was unlocked. And she was like, yeah. Oh yeah. Now, now you can, uh, cook his grenades for him. Yes. Yes. Um, I thought that was dope because I got into situations where I was trying to do completely stealth and, you know, there was a bunch of people like in a crowd um, that I couldn't get past. And I was like, you know what? Let me send Nick to see if any of them got explosives on them or if there was like anything I can explode with Nixus that was nearby that could take them all out. And that opportunity presented itself 
took advantage of it and it was a satisfying like way to get through the, the that portion of the game um i think uh yeah i, I after playing the game you know you know three hours and i i did want to play more i did want like i was like i it's like i was i forgot for a moment that hey i was only playing like a you know a a portion of the game, a like a small of portion of the game. Cause like after I was done, it was like, I was like, ah, oh, I want to go back and try to figure this out. You know, the bad habit I have with video games. So when I was doing that, I was playing because you know how there's a lot of stuff to collect. Like there's, there's things mm-hmm. you could like, there was things I was picking up things and making decisions as if this save is going to follow me. And I was like, let me stop. Cause like, this is not my save. Like I, it's not, like it does none of this stuff matter. So let me, I can actually take some of the risk, whatever. But there was things like moral things I wanted to do. Like, cause you know how there's like, uh, they have these factions. I think they're called syndicates, right? Where you, you start working with them. Um, but when you start working with the un- other syndicates, you start like ruining your relationship with the ones you've, I guess, just built. Um, and after I think each mission, they like will fish for you information and you got You get the choice of telling, like you can tell them the truth or you could tell them something else, but depending on what you tell them it is, will determine how your relationship with that syndicate improves, whether it gets worse or whether it gets better. I like that system. Um, this mission that I did, and I'm pretty sure you probably had to have done it, but I think it was at the either at the start the, or at the end. Or out with a starship. It was the mission. I'm trying to think of if it was the start of the <clears> second <throat> half or the end of the first half. But you needed a part. No, it had to be the first half. You needed a part for your gun, and. Do you try to get it from the black? Uh, you try to get it from the, the the gun shop dude, but he says no; those are illegal. You only only get it from syndicates, right? And you call your the mechanic. Uh, I think his name is uh, Wacko or um, Waka Waka. You call him, and he tells you, "Yeah, you could get it from one or two places. You can get it from the Crimson folks, the people you literally just helped, right?" Or you get it from the people that's like really hunting for you, right? So what I did, I don't know what you did. I chose to take the, the sneak into the from the faction I just helped because the security would be down up until you get to a restricted area. And so what I ended up doing because I had just built rapport with them, I was able to get through like like three lines of security because they knew who I was. But when it came down to like the higher insecurity where I didn't have that good of a relationship where they would just let me in, I had to do the sneaking portion. But it was only like one portion of the mission I had to do that, which cut the time, the mission time down by a lot had I not had that relationship. Or if I would have done took it from someone that I'm on like a wanted list, and then it would have been harder because I would either have to go guns blazing or do a complete like sneaking format. And it was just like, that's actually crazy. Like, it's, it, I know it's, it, it has stuff like that has been done before, but I really enjoyed that. It's weird to do it in Star Wars because in Star yeah. Wars you're used to just going in there like no, no other chance but guns blazing. Yeah, Absolutely. but in this game, you know, you you're not a Jedi, you're not invincible. Mm. Nah, and then there was this uh, like there, there's like clues around the game, right? So I I picked up this um. This clue, I, I, I got better. I had got good during this preview of getting into like doing the little, the little puzzles <clears throat> for the locks. Um, I got good at those. So I went to a room. I found like a, a note that pretty much gave me a hint of who was gonna win the race. The little, what's the little animal? Like they like horses or whatever. But so it, it gave me a hint of who's gonna win a race. I went and placed a bet. And like one triple my earnings uh-huh. because I paid attention to the the note. Huh? I need you to come out here to help right. me. I, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> well, you have to pause. Like I, some of the shit. I can't pause the podcast, Zachary. <laughs> I gotta go. Oh man. Sorry. That's no, all right. My brother keeps calling me. Nah, fair enough. We're gonna um wrap up soon, but 
it it was things where I felt like a lot of the small stuff I was running into in the game were not like pointless. I feel like everything had like some meat behind it or some meaning to the point where I had to break out of my habit. You know how you just be listening to banter when you're walking by in most games, they'd just be talking about nothing. I actually never really listened to the banter. The a lot of their banter though are giving you hints or think giving you something. Yeah, I know. I like the you know, you, you can choose how you want to, uh, you know, take on. The only thing I'm a little worried is I felt like I was coming across the same kind of scenarios. And so I hope that they, like, change how you sneak into some of these places because it did feel like it was just the same sneaking into. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you go to this room or that room. I hope that, like, that's a little bit picked up on. Yeah. To a degree. I, I've, um, I felt like, there now I've only failed like one of them, but and then where I got into a location, um, I think I picked the hardest way to get into it. And then when I when I got when they caught me, I the second time I went in, I found like a, a way I could have just stuck and that was much easier and whatnot. But the scenario, I understand what you're talking about with the scenarios and stuff being sort of like samey. I didn't have a problem with it, but I do want to have, I, I want to be, I, I look forward to like the full game to be able to explore like how many types of scenarios. I felt like in, in the short time that I had that there, were, I feel like there was at least like three ways I can tackle um, a mission or to get to the, uh, the get point, whether I had to hack my way through or find like a shortcut or Obviously, they there's a lot of like they they allow you to do bribes and you know and buy your way through stuff or um, talk your way through things. Um, I don't know. I, I I really had fun playing the game. Um, I do think that there's a lot of commentary out there, and this is why. Um, and I'm starting to learn this. Um, media, big media content creators are not good for games. I, like negative negative coverage sells that's what it is just like how you know how like good movies right a movie you like to high chance it has like a bad review <laughs> like for some reason i feel like good movies just get like shit reviews for some reason i don't know why like and, I, I, and I, what's I, funny is like um deadpool's getting shit on for like no reason yeah because like... the, the thing is is that there's this <laughs> thing this where like when something's new or when it's time to talk about like something or content, it it has to be negative, it has to be bad. That's what seems to click. Nobody wants to share how good something is. And I think that's what's going on a little bit here with Star Wars Outlaws. I, I was like checking out content. I know things leaked, um, but you know, I think Gaming Bolt has something they said where uh, are, it, it is, is, there, is Star Wars playing uh, Outlaws playing it too safe? Like, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Um, uh, Reforged Dim Jimmy Neutron he says the game's been downgraded. Uh, like, um, it's like the, the the negative cover. Oh, this looks bad with their headlines and stuff like that. But the thing is, I will say, like, honestly, like when playing a game, I had a great time playing the game. You know what I mean? Obviously, there were some things and stuff that they need to improve and fix, and hopefully, they do within a window that they have to release the game. But I'm actually after playing it, I'm looking forward to this game. I'm really it was Star Wars Outlaws was not on my radar, even though I have a like a, a, a I want to say respect for Ubisoft. Um, they've grown on me over the past few years with their uh, releases. Uh, I feel like they've uh, they're consistent. Um, I think the games I I think last year I didn't really. You know, wasn't a fan of the two releases. I wasn't a fan of Mirage. I wasn't a fan of Avatar um, Frontier. I wanted to like Avatar, and I keep trying to pick it up, but it's it's just they haven't really connected with me. Uh, so, but you know, and having them come back with Star Wars, and it being to me, in my opinion, I think it's a uh, a definitely a a, pal a palate cleanser, a good, a decent <clears throat> game. I don't think. There's not a lot of like and the, quality things thing, that are out are out right now or coming. Go ahead. The thing too is like Star Wars. Star Wars Outlaws is like it's not the same type of game that they normally make. No, not at all. Like it's a complete. It's not. It doesn't have the Ubisoft 
uh, formerly in it to uh, to a huge degree. Yeah. But people are still not happy. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I don't under like understand it. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of people going in with the, this negative stigma of the game, and people are just pretty much falling into the trap that because these these people on YouTube, uh, these people. The media is saying it's, it's it's bad, so people are just going to just buy into it's bad. Um, but I haven't really saw, I haven't seen anything in what I played in four in three hours of gameplay. What I've what I've saw, what I played, what I got to experience. Um, I I, I don't think I can identify anything as like, dude, this is like bad. I walked away impressed very very impressed because i was like for x after a while i was like oh this is a ubisoft game right shout out to massive i think massive is the one that's doing this one. um guys <laughs> i think Mas- i'm doing a podcast can you still hear me i can still hear you what how because i'm, I'm, I'm muted not um not quite <laughs> you gotta you gotta mute on like discord or whatever like, or how does that sound you sound clean. You don't sound muted. Oh, man. I was using a different mic. What mic? Your oh. Xbox headset? Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. I guess that's what I was using. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, damn. I'm sorry, audience. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, so you didn't exactly. tell me you did. I've been telling like. you, dude. I can hear. I was like, dude, you're still, you're not muted. <laughs> no, I didn't hear you say that because when I like called, I, I didn't hear any. No, every like, time I, Zach called, listening. it was like I was like, you know, "Oh, I'm muted. sorry, guys. I'm sorry." <laughs> yeah, you, you wasn't saying nothing. Like, I I couldn't talk over you. It was just like, okay, I feel you. I, I apologize. Continue. Uh, no, but um, he, go ahead. Here's the thing: when it comes to Star Wars Outlaws, Star Wars Outlaws, it's not gonna like move the needle by any sh- shape of the uh, imagination, but I do think it does stuff different to make it unique from the other IPs that they make and, and i think if if you went on and on for years about they need to change the the formula of star uh, of of ubisoft games and you don't support this then you fraud them when it comes to ubisoft now you can make a debate if you feel like you know uh it's weird how they did some things when it comes to the character you know i did see the character they changed how she looked drastically from the actual uh person itself and I think that's fair uh, criticism, but I don't think that's enough criticism not to play the game. Um, yeah, I don't get too much into what the characters like look like. I don't know. But if... it is it, it is weird if they change what they look like. Though. My thing is, like is that... this, is this based off a of real Star Wars character? Like, I don't, I don't, or no, just a it's regular the... actor? No, it, a regular actor. Okay, and they modified her to look like what they expected her nah. to look like in the video game. You spent they spent a lot of money on that mocap shit. If they modified her, it was for a reason. Yeah, it was only a reference. See, I don't, I don't know who the person is, but I know who. Do I know who the actor is? No, probably, probably not. Like, so I don't stuff like that. I don't like care. I'm not going to pretend that I care about like all these like uh, people that video games are modeled after. Like, no, unless they're portraying a real per like unless they're going to scan Kevin Hart or Will Smith or something like that or into a game and, and I'm supposed to know that that's Will Smith and or Kevin Hart or whomever it's supposed to be. I don't care. To me, it's just like okay, you could tell they scanned somebody. You know what I mean? But um. Uh, stuff like that don't really bother me. That I would never factor that in into uh to me in my opinion, I would never factor that into a review. Is the game good? Is it does it look good? Does it play good? Uh See, like, here's the thing though. I do think that it's a conversation that needs to be had because it's it's hit that critic. It's hit from both sides. Mm-hmm. You have people that say these these characters don't look attractive enough. And then you have people that say that uh, they do too much. So I, I do think it, it is a conversation to be had. Do I think it's the end all be, be uh, the end all be all conversation? No. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, I mean, I feel like this this thing is recent. This whole character thing. I think this is all started with. Um, when did where did it all start? Did it start with 
like uh, Forspoken. I think that's the one that really had like. Good, but I feel like they've always been scanning people in the game. It's just that people started paying more attention to it the last two years or so. Like the last couple of years, because games, you know, Jack Joyce, they put him in quantum break, and there were it, no 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 out no backlash or anything like that. Um, it's it's now being more prominent. I know it's more popular now that they're going for more scans and instead of like you know just artist work. But I I think that would be that was the least of my worries uh, when I was watching trailers for Star Wars or when I was was playing it or looking at none of that stuff like came to mind. My thing is is this going to be fun? And I think they found the right balance. And hopefully, you know, you know what we played wasn't like a you know a vertical you know slice or anything like that and maybe it and it was it, but it seems like it was representation final representation of what we're going to play and if, if the game is able to upkeep what i played uh i think it's i think it's going to be well received yeah, I, personally i i think it's going to do well the the thing i liked is i played a lot of stealth games and this game definitely felt like they took their time to think about how they wanted to do the stealth but like mechanics so yeah. I, I do think it would be it's going to be drastically better. I will agree on that. Uh, as far as like recede well, it depends on how they handle the Star Wars lore. Now I feel like they're doing a good what, job with it so far. It, but but see, I don't know the Star Wars lore enough to determine what is a good job and what's not a good job. I didn't see nothing that raised flags, but I don't know. I, I don't know any better. Yeah. Uh, and who do you think is going to be asked to review these games? Uh, when it comes to reviewing them, it's going to be the Star Wars peoples. Yeah. So it's just going to determine how respectful they are on that lore. Mm. Yeah, I think they. The, for a lore, I think I'm now I'm casual Star Wars. I'm not like deep Star Wars, right? Um, but I feel like there's a lot of deep stuff in there, deep Star Wars lore in there, for people to catch for star wars fans to catch on and um because there were things that i was like yeah this is definitely not like this is out of my realm like like stuff i'm supposed to know of uh like the like the even down to like the little animals in the universe and uh what they're known for and whatnot um I, again man i'm looking forward to the full game um tell me about your uh like the moment you had, was there anything that in particular that you liked or like uh, some examples uh, that you've came across in your um, playthrough? I really enjoy just the in-depth difference of gameplay. You can literally switch things up completely if you want to. I enjoyed that because that, that's the biggest thing I enjoy the most is like letting me play the game how I want to play. Yeah. And there wasn't like too many incidents. Like I said, I'm a little worried about you know, some of the stealth missions, if it's just the same thing over and over again. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. But for the most part, when I was playing it, I felt satisfied. And felt like I can I can really attack this any way I want to. Yeah, I, I, I saw that, you know, the, di the, the diversity and how they, you know, wanted the player to, to, to tackle um, some of the things, some of the outcomes, the scenarios. Um, you know, I thought the gunplay was tight, too. You know the, the blasters. The gunplay is good, and they have yeah. like that splinter cell, like lock on shit yeah. too. Yeah, and then the hand to hand combat seems pretty uh, decent. Um, there was oh my god, what else did they do um, that I thought was pretty um, impressive? Um, I'm looking forward to just exploring like the world and seeing what the what these other characters bring to the table, like some of the side quests, some of the side jobs. Uh, I overheard some uh, dude. Um, you, they have these moments where you can sit down and listen to some people talking, and they were talking about a a stash that was like uh, left somewhere. And I could have gone now. Obviously, during the demo, I couldn't do it. They didn't let me do it, but I could have gone and like look for because I take a there's a journal of what they were talking about. And, and gone to see where that stash was and see it, it was supposed to be like a big credits drop off and whatnot um but man i'm i'm looking forward uh i'm definitely looking forward to the to the full game um guys please check out uh again by the time you guys you know watch this uh podcast 
video should already be live uh, uh, with with gameplay captured from um, like direct feed from our uh, well, at least it will be on my channel. Will be my gameplay that I. Um, I'll able. be having one up on a IOP and a gaming attic too. Yeah. So that should give you a better, you know, you know, idea look to see what we should be getting into when a game launches uh this time next month. Um but yeah, looking forward to that. Um hopefully, you know, we get uh you know blessed with that, you know, review copy cuz I I I got some vacation time I can I... use for it, so I do think we will get a uh, review copy. It's just Ubisoft's like really different if you get it like the day it comes out or not. Like, yeah, yeah, something like that. Like I some... don't want to wait the day of. I need to. You gotta give it. You gotta give me a week out of it. Like you gotta give me. You know, let me give get my my time though. Like I I, I still know what the heck I'm doing. So like hopefully uh, that'll be uh, soon. Hopefully the game doesn't experience any delays. You know. I know a lot of people fandom has been on Ubisoft ass, whether it be, you know, the Star Wars girl or the Assassin's Creed black man in Japan or whatever. Um, they a lot of people have just been, you know, very sensitive and, you know, overly aggressive towards Ubisoft. Um, and me personally, I just want some good games, some decent games, something to have fun with because they're coming too far in between. And I think Ubisoft is on the right track uh, with their next two releases. Um, you got anything you want to add before we get out of here? No, that's pretty good. One thing I want to, I want to, you know, thank, uh, apologize for like the mic thing and the noise in the background. Normally me and Spoo do this a little earlier. Yeah. And, uh, people decide to cook at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> uh, so I want to uh, really apologize for that because, uh, next week I promise it won't be that way. We're good. We're good. You know, uh, I'm sure somebody's going to timestamp your your outburst, uh, but uh, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Another episode of Weapon Will Playing Xbox Podcast. Shout out to the Patreon uh, members uh, for keeping uh, this show alive, and uh, please check back here uh, next week uh, for another episode. Also, check out our channels. You know, obviously, Gaming Attic Lord, uh, Iron Lords Podcast will have some coverage up on. Um, Star Wars Outlaws. I will. I have uh, coverage up on Star Wars Outlaws on my channel, um, and you can hear our, you know, impressions or organized impressions uh, with real time gameplay. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We're out of here. Peace.